Okay, so in this video, what we're going to take a look at is something called potential divider equations. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how we derive the potential divider equations, so where those come from. And in order to do that, what I'm going to be using is these circuitry laws, so the current law, voltage laws, and Ohm's law. So if you're not sure about what those are, what you need to do is go back to the previous video where I actually look at those laws and derive them. So make sure you're familiar with those before we actually start this. But if you are, um, do let, let's get cracking. Okay, so first of all, what is a potential divider? So essentially, a potential divider is essentially you've got to have two or maybe more resistors in series with one another. So what happens is any EMF supplied to those resistors gets split between those two. Um, so we know from Kirchhoff's voltage series law that if you have resistors in series, uh, their potential differences must add together to give the EMF. So it's kind of the similar kind of thing going on here. So the trick with potential divider equations is you first of all have to spot a potential divider. So um, this one is really easy to see because we've just got two resistors in series. Uh, but more often you'll have more complex circuits, like something like this. Um, so, for instance, this could be a potential divider, but what you'd need to do is work out what the potential difference is across those two resistances first. And likewise, this one could be a potential divider here, but again, you'd need to know what the potential difference was here to apply your potential divider equations. Um, so that's one of the, going to be the first stages of figuring out when we start solving problems with this. So let's crack on with deriving the potential divider equation. So the first quite obvious question comes up is, well, what, what do these give me? Like, what's the advantage of these? And the main advantages of them is that you don't have to deal with current once you're using potential divider equations. So we'll use current to derive them, but once we've got the equation, we don't need to worry about current. So all we'll have in the equation is like potential differences and resistances, nothing else. So it's quite easy to explain the link between resistance and potential difference from that. Okay, so if you look at this circuit on the left, what we've got is an EMF support source supplying an EMF that I've called V0. This is typically what you'd see in a book if you saw this. And what we're interested in finding out is what the potential difference is across R1 or what a voltmeter would read if it was across R1. So the first thing we're going to do is generate an expression for the current in this circuit. So the current is going to be the total EMF divided by the total resistance around the circuit. So that's what you can see here. And the total resistance is just going to be adding the three together because they're in series with each other. So that's what you can see here. Using Ohm's law, we know that V1 is going to be equal to the current times R1. So that's what we've got here. And then what you do is you substitute in this expression current into that equation and you end up with something that looks like this and this is known as the potential divider equation. So on the top line you have the, the resistance that you're interested in finding the potential difference across and on the bottom line you have the sum of all the resistors that form the potential divider. So in this case you've got three, very often you might have two. Um, so that's how we derive this equation and this is what the equation looks like. All right, so let's have a look at an example of putting that into practice. So first one similar to the generic setup we just had. So what we've got is a 2, a 4, and a 5 ohm resistor, all in series with an EMF of 6 volts. So here's our general equation for this. So we've got three resistances on the bottom because we've got three that form our potential divider. So we're interested in the potential difference across the 2 ohm resistor. So that's what goes on the top line. This is the potential difference applied across these three resistors. In this case, happens to be the EMF. And we can calculate, put the numbers in, and we end up with 1.1 volts will be across the 2 ohm resistor. And then we could do the same for the 4 and the 5, but so we just all you'd have to do is swap in 4 for the 2 here or 5 for the 2 here. So we can see that if a bigger resistor in a set of series resistance will demand a larger chunk of the EMF. So that's similar to what we know, know from before when we looked at the different circuitry rules. Okay, so that's a simple example. So let's have a look at one more like the complicated example earlier where we had to spot the potential divider. So we've got an EMF of 6 volts, that's what it says at the top, so we've got your EMF of 6 volts, 
and we've got resistors that are all two ohms. So all five resistors are two ohms, and we want to know the potential difference across R1. So we want to know the potential difference across this resistor here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try and work out what the potential difference is across the parallel resistors. That's going to be our first stage, because then we have the potential difference across the resistors and the resistance, so we can use potential divider equations. So to do that, what we're going to do is use our resistor rules to combine all four resistors here into one overall resistor. So that's what you can see here. So we've got two twos in series, two twos in series, so that's why you can see those on the bottom line. Add those together and flip them, and that tells us the total resistance of this section here. So what we've done is essentially we've transformed this circuit into this circuit now. So that's what this R parallel is, I call it. I've turned all of those parallel resistors into one overall resistor. So what we can do now is work out, using potential divider equations, what the potential difference is across this one. So same as before, we put the EMF in, so six. We're interested in the potential difference across potential difference across the parallel section, so that goes on the top line, and we know R3 is 2, so we have 2 plus 2 on the bottom line, gives you 2 over 4, or a half, so you know there's going to be 3 volts of potential difference across your parallel, whole parallel section of your circuit. So to go back to where we were before, we have just figured out what the potential difference is across here, and actually also what the potential difference is across here, because they have to be the same. So now we know that, we can use our potential divider rules again and put them in this form, but in this instance we're going to put 3 volts in here because there's 3 volts across the potential divider. We're interested in R1 and we end up with 1.5 volts across R1. That would be your volt meter reading. So that's one example of using potential divider equations. So we've not dealt with current at all, which is quite nice. But the other advantage of them is actually in terms of explaining what happens. So that's what I'm going to have a look at now, how we can use potential dividers to explain stuff. Okay, so um, we've got a circuit here, and I've kept it quite generic. So what it says is, if we replace R3, this one, with a bigger resistor, explain what will happen to V1. So V1 is the potential difference across this resistor here. So if we think how we would calculate V1, what we'd have is your EMF, because that's the potential difference across your resistors. You'd put R1 on the top line, and then you'd have the sum of the three resistors on the bottom line. So you can see the only thing about this that would change is this R3 value here. R1, R2 haven't changed, nor has the EMF source. So what's happened is the bottom line of this calculation has increased, which would mean the potential difference across this resistor over here would decrease. And that kind of fits in what we, what, with what we know, because we know R3 is essentially going to take a larger chunk of our EMF if it's a bigger resistor. But this is how you can use an equation to explain how that works. Um, so that's, generally speaking, um, how the explanation works. But I, there's a few ways you can go wrong with this, and I want you to be aware of those. Okay. Um, so what if we replace R1 with a bigger resistor? Explain what happens to the potential difference across it, V1. So we know, generally speaking, that what's going to happen is V1 is going to increase. But the difficulty comes with actually explaining that. It's, uh, no, people, a lot of people go wrong with this. So just as before, we've got this set up here. So what people do is they go, well, this is say the same, this is say the same, this is say the same. R1's increased, therefore V1 has increased. But you can see here, we actually had R1 on the bottom line as well, so there's quite a big hole in that explanation. So because R1's on the top and bottom line, um, it's not as straightforward as that, but that's what a lot of people will do and say, and they'll lose out because that's actually not a very clear explanation there. So you do have to be very careful. So in terms of how I would go about explaining this, you actually have to look at the other two resistors. So what I'm going to do is figure out what happens to the potential difference across these two here, that I've called V2 plus 3. So if we plug that into a potential divider equation, we can see that as R1 increases, the potential difference across them 
uh, is going to decrease because this bottom line has got bigger. And we know that the potential differences have to add together to give the EMF. So if this is decreased, the uh, essentially V1 must have increased. And that's a clear explanation, and there's no ambiguity about that ex explanation at all. So that's the way I would approach explaining that. Um, and so that's what we've got there. I'm um, essentially applying Kirchhoff's voltage series law to then work out, well, if we know the potential difference across the other two is decreased, it must have increased, therefore. So that would be a clear explanation of how it works. And there's no, well, the top line's changing and the bottom line changing. Which one's changing by more? That's not clear. This is a clear explanation. Okay. Um, so that concludes my uh, presentation for today on potential divider equations. Um, I hope you found that useful. Um, the next video I'm going to do is going to be about EMF internal resistance and then more generally about the types of errors you get in circuits. So do check that out and thanks very much for watching.